Welcome in this session. We will be talking about the concept of migration, the various types of migration and the factors that affect the migration. Before we start the concept of migration, there are few questions that come up to our mind very instantaneously. Like, first, why people migrate? Then I can ask, where are the migrants distributed? So these are some of the common questions that people usually ask on migration. Why people migrate? There can be a lot of reasons for it due to job, for better career opportunities, for marriage purposes, family relocation. There can be a lot of reasons for it. Then the next question that comes to mind is where are migrants located? So where are migrants located? How can we answer these questions? Now consider I'm drawing a rough map of the world. So this is North America, South America. You have Africa and Asia. Now, when I, this is Europe. So when I'm trying to understand the concepts of where the migrants are located, we can see in USA, there was a huge migration from Africa. And that was the slave migration. Then there can be migration in terms of colonialization. So you have Britishers here migrating to countries in Africa, Asia, and Southeast Asia. So that's what is the colonial migration. And now what the term we use among all these migration is the concept of globalization where we say people move from one place to another and vice versa and there is a global phenomena for every movement. So you can find people from America into Asia, Africa and similarly from Asia and Africa to United States and Europe. So there is a kind of globalization. Now why do migrants face problems? So why do migrants face problems? A major reason is due to the country's immigration policy. For example, if you want to migrate into United States of America, you would require a valid visa. So it can be like H1 visa, which is a work visa, L1 visa, or you can come on a tourist visa, that's a B1 visa. But that all requires a strict immigration policies of the host country. So the country into which you are moving is the host country and the host country's immigration policies governs whether a lot of immigrants can come into the country or they cannot come into the country. The final objective of today's class would be to understand why people migrate within a country. So there is international migration that we have talked about here. So there is immigration restrictions. But why people migrate within the country? So within the country, I can say people from uh, play, city A would move to city B in lieu of family relocation or better job opportunities, better career opportunities for educational purposes or whatsoever. So there are a lot of reasons why people move from one place to another. Before we understand any of these concepts, let's try to understand the basic concept of immigration immigration and immigration so immigration is coming I for I so that's coming into the country and then you have e-migration that's going out or elimination E for E so you can remember it as elimination it's just to help students who get usually confused with what is immigration and immigration. So immigration is elimination or moving out of the country. So it's decreasing the population of that country and people are moving out of that country. Now, for either of the migrations, there are various factors that come into operation. And these factors are what is known as the push factors and the pull factors. So pull factors are the attractive factors or which bring people in. 
and push factors on the other hand are kind of repulsive factors which take people out. So repulsive factors can be famine or floods in the region. Then there can be natural disasters, earthquake, volcanoes or any natural cyclones, any natural calamity. Then there can be war that takes people out. There can be violence, huge crime rate. So these are some of the push factors which, which are repulsive. Now there are some of the push factors like overcrowding is again a repulsive factor. Now there are some of the push factors which are non-repulsive but they put, they put pressure on the people to move out. So for example job, that's a major push factor. Now what are the pull factors or the attractive factors? Uh, so job here is like you want to get a job and here if you are getting a better job that would be a pull factor. If you do not have a good job, there is no good job in your home area. So what would happen is a push factor. You would try to search for a better job and this better job would become a pull factor here. So low taxes, cleanliness, then you have better schooling, the other important factors are more rooms or uh, I should say better standards of living, quality of life, better medical facilities, then you have nice climate. So these are some of the pull factors which bring a person into the country and on the other hand these are the push factors which take the people out from the country. Now be it push factor or pull factor, the important thing here to understand is there are a huge number of cases of migration. Now let's understand with a simple example. A numerous Indians have migrated to Persian Gulf, the reason being Persian Gulf is an oil exporting country. As a result, it has huge job opportunities. So what happens is, Indians move to Persian region and what they do is, they send back the remittance to home. So they send remittance to home. That's one of the basic uh, idea behind the people's moving in. And this sending of remittance, what does it does? It increases the balance of payment. So balance of payment of the nation increases. So this way, it helps the country from where the people are moving out. So India, in this case, is benefited by sending the remittance and increasing the balance of payment. But on the other hand, there is a drawback that India has here and that drawback is the issue of brain drain. What does the word brain drain mean? Brain drain is a simple terminology that talks about draining of the intellectual mass from the country. So due to better job, better monetary opportunities, what people do is they migrate to other nations and the cream of the any country migrates and that leads to Brain drain, brain drain in the region. So this is one kind of migration where you are having benefit to one country and then you have another uh, drawback but that is usually subsided. Now there are other cases of migration. One is refugees. These are like people which move out of the country due to fear of persecution like they might be uh, persecuted for some reason or the other. So what they do is they move out of the countries. For example, Chakma refugees. So Chakma refugees are the people moving from Bangladesh and they move into the nearby regions. So nearby countries have the Chakma refugees coming in. Then you have refugees coming in from Nepal and these all refugees come up to the neighboring countries as well as the other countries where they get the shelter. So they are basically just moving out of their country. The next kind of people here are internally displaced people. What is meant by internally displaced people? 
Internally displaced people are those people who come out of the home area due to the fear of war or crime, increased crime in that region. So what they do is they move out from that region and try to settle out into some other region. Ravenstein was one of the most famous geographers who worked on the migration theories and gave some dynamic concepts in migration. His funds, his, some of the fundamental concepts was, for example, there is city A, there is city B, and there is city C. The distance between A and C, for example, is 20 kilometers, A to B is 5 kilometers, and it's 15 kilometers from B to C. A person has to search for opportunity or some product. So what he would do, he won't directly go to the city C because it's 20 kilometers. On the other end, he'll go to the city B, which is just 5 kilometers. So what happens here is, Ravenstein say that people migrate usually to short distances. Okay. Then, he says the migration takes place in the steps. What does it mean? He'll go to city B. He'll try to search for that product. If he finds there, it's well and good. If he does not, he'll move further 15 kilometers to city C to find out the product. So that's what is moving into steps from A to B, then B to C. The next concept that Ravenstein gave was migration from rural to urban area is most prominent. Most of the migrations takes place from rural agricultural settings to urban industrialized settings. Then he says that migration, where the case is international or there is international migration, what happens is it's mainly in the case of adults. Young and yeah, children do not migrate internationally, and these adults too, most of them are young males. So it's basically predominantly the working age, which supports the older and the younger generations. So these are some of the concepts that Ravenstein gave. Besides these, in migration, there are two important concepts that we need to understand. That's the distance decay. Distance decay means as the distance increases, your tendency to migrate decreases. For example, I have to meet some of my families and friends who are located 100 kilometers and another set of friends who are located around 800 kilometers. What would happen is my tendency to meet the friends who are located 100 kilometers would increase and those who are located 800 kilometers would decrease. What's the reason attributed to it? The reason attributed is with distance, your probability to migrate decreases. Migration decreases. So migration decreases as the distance increases. So that's the basic concept in distance decay. And next is intervening opportunity that we discussed when we talked about moving in the steps. So intervening opportunity is A wants to move to B to search something. So if he finds that thing in B, finds that product in the city B, he won't move to city C. So there is an intervening opportunity, though it is a small size town, but there is an intervening opportunity that he might find something at the place B. So if he finds something at the place B, he won't move further till place C. So that is what is known as intervening opportunity. So these are the few major concepts that we need to understand while understanding the concept of migration. Now let's discuss on to the next concept that's the type of migration. The types of migration, some of them are very simple. So you know there is urban area, you know there is rural area. So what kind of migration there can be there? So we'll draw all possible combinations and permutations. So it can be rural to urban. It can be rural to rural, it can be urban to rural and urban to further urban. So rural to urban is basically from agricultural society to an industrial society. From one village to another, that's rural to rural, is basically due to uh, better agricultural opportunities, marriage or related aspects. 
from urban to rural is due because of uh, increasing opportunities for development. So the rural areas are now developing. From urban to urban is usually from a smaller sized urban area to a bigger sized urban area. So these are the four migration types that we have talked about which is related to rural and urban. Now there is national migration that's within the country and then you have international migration and this international migration is outside the country. So national within the country, international outside the country. Then step migration as we already discussed, it's moving in the steps. So I'll move from one place to another. I'll see if I have enough opportunities there. I'll stop. Otherwise, I'll take further step to move for forward. So that's what is step migration. So it's kind of moving from a rural area to a big city. And that is a kind of step migration. The next is chain migration. This is something very interesting to understand. What happens in chain migration? Chain migration is moving in chains. For example, a lot of people from Turkey moved to Berlin and they, they were basically the, that was basically the ethnic enclave. <clears throat> what does that mean? Like four people moved from Turkey to Berlin and then after those four people again 40, 40 people of the same sect moved out. So that's chain migration or migration of a uh, series of ethnic group or a regional group. So that's what is chain migration. The next is counter migration. Counter migration is moving back. So for example, uh, or returning. For example, a lot of people retire in US and return back. So that's kind of counter migration or a counter migration can be I uh, opted for a good job. I got a good job in New York. And when I did my job for 5 or 10 years, I decided to move back to my original city, to, so I moved back to Portland. So it's kind of migration between the two nations or two places and returning back to the original place. So that is counter migration. The next is channelized migration. Channelized migration talks about a standard channel being established, for example, uh, in US, there is a very particular phenomenon that retirees will move out either to Arizona or to Florida. So those who are affluent will move to Florida and those who are not that affluent will move to Arizona. So that's a kind of channelized migration that has been established. Okay, now that's the age you have retired. So it's time to migrate. So if you are decently good uh, good and affluent, you would move to Florida. If you are uh, not that affluent, you will try to move to Arizona. So that is what is called as generalized migration. So in this session, we have talked about the various, uh, various types of migration, the factors that have affected migration, Ravenstein's concept on migration, the concept of distance decay and intervening opportunities. Hope you enjoyed this session. Have a good day ahead. Stay tuned for further lectures in geography.